This unit covers chapter 10 from your textbook. And we will be covering the following objectives to introduce the concepts of position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration, to study particle motion along a straight line and represent this motion graphically, solve for displacement, velocity, and acceleration using three equations of objects in motion, and finally, to study the motion of a projectile and solve for displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Before we go too far, it is really important to be able to understand and define the following concepts. So here's some terms that I would like you to go over, make sure you understand, uh, and in fact memorize. The first is kinematics. Kinematics is the analysis of the geometry of motion without concern for the forces causing motion. So this is the type of motion that we will, we will be looking at in the first half of this course throughout module one. Kinetics, on the other hand, is the study of motion and the forces associated with motion. So in this module, this will be primarily in module two where we will be covering kinetics, we will introduce Newton's first law which is F equals MA, where we do take into account forces. A particle, this is a body with a mass, but of negligible size and shape. Often at the start of this course, we will be looking at bodies that maybe do, does have a shape, such as a, a car or a plane or even a ball but we don't necessarily care about that shape. We're not going to take into account uh, any air friction or any moments about a point uh, outside of this, its center of mass. So we will assume it to be a particle. A rigid body, which will be covered more in the second half of the, of the course, is a solid body where deformation is neglected. So no matter what the shape or size, we assume that there will be no deformation of that body. The next two are really important for the following chapters. First is a scalar. This is a quantity having only magnitude, so no direction. And then we have a vector, which is a quantity that does have direction, but also a magnitude. So we're going to start with displacement. What is the difference between distance and displacement? This is really important to understand this concept here. Distance is a scalar quantity and is the sum total distance of all movements. So let's say, for example, you need to drive from the college to City Hall in Timmins you are potentially say starting in the parking lot in the college. And so the distance you are going to travel would be the sum total from that point all the way to city hall. So you would exit out of the parking lot you, in one direction, you go down the hall, uh, down the highway at another direction. And as you go along, you know, your odometer is going to be ticking upwards. So the amount that you've traveled from point A to point B is the total distance. Displacement, however, is a vector quantity and is the difference between the original position and some later position. That means any of the movements in between the, those two points, the first position and the final position, have no consequence when you're trying to solve for displacement. Okay. And I'll give you a really clear example of that in a minute. First, what I want to also uh, show you is that when we're dealing with distance, we're dealing with units of something like meters when we're dealing with SI or feet when we're dealing with US customary units. Okay. Whereas with displacement, while we do have the same units, 
When you solve for a displacement, you also need to give a final angle. And so this will often be shown relative to either a horizontal or vertical direction. You'll almost always see me do it as, as such relative to a horizontal direction. And we would put in the angle. Again, you'll see more examples shortly. So if we go to example 10.1, this can be found on page 339. In this example, it says that a car is driven 8 kilometers north, 9 kilometers east, and then another 4 kilometers north. We want to calculate the displacement of the car and the distance traveled. Okay, so here is the problem, as well as a diagram representing what the problem states. And I would expect any question that you're given on an assignment, on a test, that you will do the same. You will always at least draw a free body diagram or some figure uh, like I'm showing here so that I know that you understand what the question is asking. Okay, one thing that I can add in here is I know that since the eight kilometers north and nine kilometers east, these are at 90 degree angles. So it's always helpful to put that kind of information in there. So I'm just showing uh, those squares to show that they are at 90 degrees. So we're talking about distance. As I mentioned, when you're traveling, the example I gave earlier, traveling from the, col uh, from the college to, um, to City Hall, we add up all the distances that we go. So that's easy in this case. So distance traveled of this car would be equal to eight kilometers north plus nine kilometers east plus four kilometers north again. And so we get a total of 21 kilometers distance traveled. And this is a scalar unit, so we just need the final value here, the final magnitude. We don't care about direction. Now with displacement, remember I said that it is, we go back here, we said that it is a vector quantity and is the difference between original position and some later position. So in this case, as I said, I don't care about wh what happens in between. I want to go from the first position and I end up at the final position. Remember I said it's a vector quantity, so I can draw that vector right in there. And I see that it is a line going directly from our start position to our final position. And that is the displacement. And, and this displacement is equal to, and this displacement is equal to 15 kilometers, and we need to give it some angle. Okay, that angle relative to a horizontal, okay, would be, this is a three, four triangle and so as a result if you want to get the actual angle itself treat this as a right angle triangle so tan theta is equal to four over three and so theta which is that angle right there relative to the horizontal is equal to 53.1 degrees Now, you might be wondering how I came to the conclusion that displacement is 15 kilometers. And it's not, uh, it's not obvious right off the bat here. This is where the math unit that we looked at in the previous units becomes really, really important. By drawing the red line here from the start point to the end point, what we can take from this is that the angle in here, so we're going to call this angle, we'll call that alpha and alpha, those are equivalent. Okay, and since we also know that there's a 
right angle between the eight and nine kilometers. And then there's a right angle between nine and four kilometers. What you then can take from this is that these two triangles are similar triangles because then that means that this angle and this angle are the same. So those are similar triangles. If that's the case, then we know that the ratio for the sizes of each side of these triangles is two since on this side is eight kilometers, this side is four kilometers. So eight over four is two. That means that all the lengths of the triangle on the left hand side would be double what it is on the, on the right hand side. So that nine kilometers, remember, is for the full length, right? Um, so if that's the case, then we need to break up this length here and this length here so that one is double the other, but it needs to be equivalent to nine. So the value for that would actually be six and three. Okay, so if that is six and three, then that's how, first of all, I got my three, four triangle here to get my angle. But then that's also how I get my 15 kilometers. And if you're still not sure, what we can do is let's just draw out, write out the triangle on the right hand side. Again, we have three, four. And if we were to use the Pythagorean theorem, we would say that this hypotenuse is equal to four squared plus three squared. And if we solve for that, we would get five. And since that length has to be half of the other length, then we know that, do a different color here, if this is 5, that hypotenuse is 5, this hypotenuse is 10. So the full length from start to finish would be 10 plus 5, which is 15. So that's quite a bit. So I did sort of jump to the conclusion there as 15 kilometers, um, but I also, so I wanted you to make sure you understand how I got there, okay? Uh, and then again, like I said, what we're doing is we want to get the angle. If you just gave me 15 kilometers, remember that is incorrect because displacement is a vector quantity. You need to give both magnitude and direction. And so that's why we figured out what the actual angle was, which is 53.1 degrees. Okay, once you understand the concept of displacement, then velocity and speed are very similar. Okay, where speed is a scalar, so it is, uh, is the change of distance per unit of time, for example, meters per second, kilometers per hour, feet per minute. We travel at a speed when we're in the, in the vehicle. You know, in town is typically 50 kilometers per hour. But that's only the speed. We want to know what the velocity is. Well, it is meters per second for units or, for example, feet per second in US customary units, but we again have to give an angle with that. And velocity, since it indicates both speed and direction, is the rate of change of displacement. This is really important here. This is the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. So it has the same units as speed, but again, we also give it uh, an angle. So the equation then for velocity would be S for displacement over t for time okay and that would be an average an average delta s over delta t so let's look at how we use this in example 10.2 which can be found on page 340. So in this example, it says that the path followed by a pin in a printing press mechanism is shown in figure 10.5. Starting from the origin, it reaches a point in, uh, reaches point one in two seconds and then point two after a total elapsed time of three seconds. So it wants us to determine the velocity from the origin to one, velocity from one to two, and average velocity from the origin to two. So to help us uh, solve this, I'm going to start by, once again, drawing out uh, the figure that is provided. So let's look at the solution. 
we're going to start with part A. We want to determine the velocity from 0 to 1. So remember that velocity is equal to delta S over delta T. So what's the displacement from the origin, the, the first part, or the, the starting point, to the final point, which is just position 1 in this case? Okay. Um, and so what we're going to find is, this will be S1 over the time that it takes to get to these positions, so to T1. And now one thing I didn't show on here is the time, so T is equal to 2. And then it also says... Um, it reaches, so it reaches 0.1 in 2 seconds and then 0.2 after a total elapsed time of 3 seconds. So at this point it is 3 seconds. Okay, so we don't have S1 directly, but again look at that. It looks like a triangle that is formed with 12 inches and 5 inches and S1 is the hypotenuse. And so what we're going to do is we will say that S1 squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared. You'll find that S1 is equal to 13 inches. So that means the velocity is 13 inches over the time from 0 to 1, which is 2 seconds. And so we get velocity 1 equal to... 6.5 inches per second. Now remember, this is velocity, so that is still not entirely correct. We need the angle. And so that angle is based on the triangle here. We have 5 and, sorry, not 5 in, in the horizontal direction. We actually have 12 and we have 5. And so what we want is that theta there. So tan theta is equal to 5 over 12. So theta is equal to 23 degrees. Okay. So our velocity is 6.5 inches squared at an angle of 23 degrees from the horizontal. So that's the answer for part A. Okay. So let's look at part B now. Okay, so for part B, it wants us to find the velocity from 1 to 2. So we don't have to find it from the origin, but we need to find it from 1 to 2 in this case. So remember, the displacement then would be figuring out that length S2. Okay, so we need to find S2. Now, how would we find that based on what's given? And you may see that original triangle and go, well, it's not a right angle, so do I have to use the sine law or cosine law? However, if you were to take the 12 inches across and then going down from that point, we have 5 inches plus 15 inches. So we do, in fact, have a right angle triangle. We see that up at the top right corner here. That is one large triangle there. So S2 would be equal to... So that's the square root, or s squared is equal to, we'll go 12 squared plus 20 squared. So s2 is equal to 23.3 inches. And that's with respect to a horizontal like this. It's going in that direction, down sort of in southeast, and 20 and 12. So again, you want to find it with respect to the horizontal, that's theta. So tan theta is equal to 20 over 12. So theta is equal to 59 degrees. So it's also helpful then to write your final answer. S2 is equal to 23.3 inches. And um, that would be, we need to find, so we're, yeah, that is our, displacement, let's actually find our velocity. So V2 is equal to 23.3 inches over, remember 
it's not three seconds. This is where some uh, students will, will get hung up here because you say, well, the time is three seconds at point two. Yes, but it's the difference between point two and point one. And so that would be three seconds minus two seconds. So that's just one second. So we end up with 23.3 inches per second at an angle southeast here of 59 degrees. So I often highly suggest when you're doing your assignment and tests is that you put a big red box around your final answer or even use a highlighter and highlight it so it is clear to you but also clear to me when I'm trying to find your final answer. Because as you can see as I'm going through this, it can get a little bit messy sometimes. Okay, our final uh, question here for part C. It says that uh, it wants to find an average velocity from the origin to two. So that's a velocity. So it's not a total distance because if it was a total distance, we'd figure out the distance from the origin to one, then one to two. Okay, and, and uh, that would be the total distance travel from the origin to point two. But we're trying to find the displacement. So that one's actually pretty easy, right? Because it's just the difference between the origin O and point two, which we see is just 15 inches. So that's all we have to do here. We know that S, and we're calling this F from the diagram, is equal to 15 inches, and it's going downwards. That's, our, that's the actual displacement. And so our final velocity from the origin to point two is equal to SF over T, which is equal to 15 inches. Now remember, it's the time between those two points. So the point uh, time at point two is three seconds, and the time at the origin is zero seconds. That's where we start. So that would be five inches per second downwards, which is equal to our VF. So once again, either highlight or put a big red box around your final solution. Okay, so that's how we solve for displacement. So the final section for this week, we're going to look at acceleration. Okay, so acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So that is, you are correct if you assume then that it is a vector quantity again, because we're taking velocity, which is a vector, and we're saying that it is, you're taking velocity and you're dividing it by time. So if velocity was already meters per second, you're dividing it by time. Now it's meters per second squared. So a change, and this one's really important. We're going to be paying attention to this, uh, not so much this week, but later on. A change in velocity, whether it's magnitude or direction, results in acceleration. And that's a really, really important one to remember. Because sometimes you'll see that, oh, there is no change in magnitude in your velocity. Therefore, there is no acceleration. The acceleration is zero. But that's not true if there's a change in direction. Is a vector, so acceleration is a vector quantity that has the same direction, also important, uh, as the change in velocity. Okay, so same direction as the change in velocity. And it, as I said, it is expressed in terms of displacement per time per time. So meters per second squared or feet per second squared. Okay, And so therefore the equation for this is your delta V, your velocity over time. So let's look at example 10.3, and that's on page 341. So in this problem, we have a car, and it starts from rest at one point and uniformly accelerates due east for six seconds, reaching a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Maintaining the speed of 40 kilometers per hour, it then reaches point three, so at a different direction, at t equals 10 seconds, traveling a direction of 30 degrees west. We want to determine the acceleration from point one to point two, and then from point two to point three. So let's draw that out. So let's go ahead and solve the first part. We want to determine the acceleration from 1 to 2. So remember, acceleration is 
the time, sorry, is the velocity with respect to time. So if we know what the velocity is at point two, that's 40 kilometers per hour due east, then we just need to determine what that is with respect to time, and that'll give us the acceleration. Now, 40 kilometers per hour is not standard units that we would use. Typically, uh, we want to use we use seconds, not hours, in any of our problems uh, throughout the program, really. And uh, we all often use meters as well. So I always suggest the very first thing that you do when you start a problem and you see that it's not in these base units is to uh, is to do that. Um, to do that conversion. So we have 40 kilometers per hour. So let's go ahead and let's know that velocity, velocity at two is 40 kilometers per hour. So the way I like to do it, I need to get rid of hours on the bottom. So all that means I'll need to multiply it by hours on the top. So that would be one hour. And we multiply it by the ratio that we know exists between hours and seconds. So remember there's 60 minutes uh, in an hour and there's 60 seconds in a minute. So 60 times 60 is 3600. So it's 3600 seconds is in one hour. Next we want to convert our kilometers into meters. So if I have kilometers on top that means I need kilometers on bottom. So for every one kilometer, we have 1,000 meters. And now what you'll see is that my kilometers and kilometers cancel out, my hours and hours cancel out, and I'd be left with meters per second. So I just multiply 40 times 1,000 divided by 3,600, which gives me 11.1 .1 meters per second. Great. So now for part one, we want to determine the acceleration from one to two. So that would be A is equal to delta V over delta T, which is equal to V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. V2 is what we just determined, 11.1 .1 meters per second minus the velocity at one, which is zero, over T2, which is, we see six seconds, minus zero seconds at the start. And so we get 1.85 meters per second squared. Now it is a vector, so we need a direction. We know it shows that the direction is due east. So it's 1.85 meters per second squared due east. Okay, for the second part, we want to determine the acceleration from two to three. A is equal to delta V over delta T. In this case, it's really helpful to use our subscripts here. We're really looking for V3 to, between V3 and V2 over T3 and T2. Okay, so this is where it does get a little bit complicated because we need to find some way to turn this into a, a what we call a velocity triangle using our vectors. If we're doing V3 minus V2. So our V3, we can draw this out. It's magnitude and direction. We'll go back to the diagram here. We see that it's 40 kilometers per hour at an angle of 30 degrees. So that would be, I'm going to draw that here. V3 is equal to 11.1 .1 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. And now what we're going to do is we are going to add the negative of V2. Well, V2, we said, is 11.1 .1 meters per second due east. So the negative of that would be due west. And if we're adding it, we do that from tip to tip when we're uh, adding vectors. So this would be the equivalent of negative V2, which is equal to 11.1 .1 meters per second. It's just going in the opposite direction. And so if what we're trying to do is actually calculate that delta V, the delta V then 
is from the start position up at the top right down to its final position there. And this would be our delta V that we are trying to calculate. You can't, because otherwise, what you would maybe look at this and go, well, V3 minus V2, they're both 11.1, .1, so it's zero. That means acceleration is zero. But remember back in a previous slide where I said that acceleration can occur if there's a change in magnitude or direction. So there's no change in magnitude, but there is a change in direction. So our acceleration can't be zero. And we're kind of proving that here by drawing out our vectors and adding them together. 11.1 .1 meters per second going at 30 degrees for V3 and our negative V2 11.1. .1. That's just to get that part of the equation for A correctly. Okay, so we still need to figure out how to solve for delta V here. Well, if we know that we have 30 degrees from the vertical to V3, so sometimes this isn't quite obvious, then what I can do is, remember that Z rule? I know then that this angle here is 30 degrees, and I know then that this is a total, that's 90 degrees. So I have a total angle there of 90 plus 30 of 120. And if you don't quite see that, then I will redraw this, and, and it's quite helpful to redraw this sometimes. Okay, so I have V3, I have V2, and I have my delta V. And what I'm saying is that the total internal angle then here is 120 degrees right there. Now, since we know, we need to find out those two other angles. Again, that might not be completely obvious. However, since we know that the sides on each of these, so we know that this is uh, negative V2, which is equal to, again, 11.1 .1 meters per second, and this is V3, which is equal to 11.1 .1 meters per second. Well, both those sides are equal. That means this is an isosceles triangle. That means that the two other angles here would be equivalent. They have to be equivalent. And since the total angle inside of a triangle is 180 degrees, right? So it's 180 minus 120 degrees is equal to 60 degrees split up among those two angles. That means that each angle in here is 30 degrees. Great. So since we need to solve for delta V, okay, we can now use the sine law. We're going to say delta V over sine. Remember, it's the angle opposite to that length that we're trying to find, 120. And you can pick one of the other sides. So let's say V3 will go 11.1 .1 meters per second over sine, the opposite angle, which is 30 degrees. We get delta V is equal to 19.2 meters per second. We want to know then what the angle is relative to the horizontal. It clearly is going down at some angle here. And I would show you again the Z law, right? Since 30 degrees is down in this corner, that means it is also 30 degrees in that corner. So delta V is equal to 19.2 meters per second at a 30 degree angle. So let's go back then to uh, this equation up here, okay, so that delta V is then equal to 19.2 meters per second over T3 minus T2. And what we have here is a total time at the end is 10 seconds. So that's 10 seconds minus six seconds, which is equal to 4.8 meters per second squared, and its angle, remember, shares the same angle as velocity, which is 30 degrees. So that is our acceleration.